with you, part one. Um, you should know that atoms are made up of subatomic particles called protons with the positive charge, neutrons with the neutral charge, and electrons with the negative charge. The nucleus, right here in the middle, shown on the bottom, is made up of protons and neutrons, positively and neutrally charged subatomic particles. An isotope is basically an atom that has a different number of neutrons. So all isotopes have the same number of protons, but just differ in the number of neutrons. <clears throat> um, electrons are found in orbitals surrounding the nucleus, and they have negative charges. And electrons are very important because these orbitals are what form bonds. There are three main types of bonds which you know for the AP Bio exam, ionic, covalent, and hydrogen bonds. Ionic bonds are the strongest type of bonds, and they occur when electrons are transferred. So here you have sodium and chlorine as an example, and this electron on, in sodium literally gets transferred over to the chlorine. And you get a positive charge on the sodium and a negative charge on the chlorine. Covalent bonds are the, are the second type of bonds, and in covalent bonding, basically the electrons are shared. So chlorine gas, for example, is an example of a covalent bond. You have two chlorines coming together and the electrons are shared. They're not transferred. You have two types of uh, covalent bonds. You have nonpolar and polar. Nonpolar covalent bonds are basically when electrons are shared equally. Polar uh, covalent bonds are when electrons are shared unequally. The last type of bond is hydrogen bonding. And in hydrogen bonding, basically the hydrogens bond to extremely electronegative elements mainly being NOF, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. Hydrogen bonding is the weakest type of bonding, and it's mainly found in water. Water is very important for the AP Bio exam. You should know um, all the properties of it. So intermolecular forces are forces uh, between water molecules, and intramolecular forces are forces within the actual water molecule. So intermolecular forces are hydrogen bonding, because hydrogen bonding occurs between uh, different water molecules. And intramolecular forces are polar covalent because the H2O is polar covalently bonded. Um, so the these hydrogen bonding and polar covalent bonding, these different two, two, di two different types of bonds come together to give water its very unique properties like cohesion, adhesion, capillary reaction, high surface tension, high heat capacity. Cohesion is basically the tendency of water to stick together. Adhesion is the tendency of water to stick to other things. Um, both through cohesion and ad adhesion, you get capillary reaction. Capillary reaction is basically whenever you have water uh, moving up the root of a stem or moving up the tree trunk. And water moves up a tree trunk or up a root, um, a stem in a plant through cohesion sticking together and adhesion sticking to other things. Both of these things combined help water to move up. <clears throat> and that process is capillary reaction. Uh, high surface tension is another important quality of water. Basically, um, these bonds create a very high surface tension on the water and this allows for certain animals to actually glide or walk on water. Um, also, these forces create a high heat capacity basically that means that it takes a lot of um heat to be added to water in order for it to raise in temperature so to boil water or to raise any kind of water it's to raise its temperature you need a lot of heat being added to it um you should know the, the phrase like dissolves like this basically means that polar dissolves polar because water is a polar covalently bonded atom molecule um, it only dissolves things that are polar. Um, it, water is also the universal solvent, which is basically means it's the main thing in most chemical reactions. Acid and bases are important to know for the AP Bio exam. Um, when something's acidic, it basically releases hydrogen ions in water. If something is basic or alkaline, it releases hydroxide ions in water. And the pH scale actually measures the acidity or al alkalinity of a substance. And the pH scale ranges from 0 to 14, with 0 to 6 being acidic, 7 being neutral, 8 through 14 being basic. And each one of these numbers represents a tenfold change. So if something has a pH of 4 and something else has a pH of 5, um, that's actually a tenfold change between the two. 
Macromolecules are important to know for the AP bio exam. Um, you have four main types, carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. This is a brief summary, just uh, summarizing all of them, but the slides, the next slides to come, are going to break each uh, carbohydrate, um, each macromolecule apart. <clears throat> um, so carbohydrates, the main function are short-term energy storage, structural support in plants. The monomer is a monosaccharide. They're found in 1 to 2 to 1 ratios of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. Examples of carbohydrates are glucose, like C6H12O6, and examples of polysaccharides or multiple uh monosaccharides stuck together are starch, glycogen, cellulose. Lipids, the main functions are long-term energy storage, chemical messengers, insulation, and protects the soft organs in the human body. The monomers for lipids are fatty acids. You have two types of fatty acids, saturated and unsaturated. In saturated, you basically have all single bonds within between the carbon atoms, and in unsaturated, you have um, a, a double bond between the, between the carbon atoms. Um, examples of lipids are fats, oils, waxes, and hormones. Proteins. Proteins are very important. They have a whole bunch of functions, and they're mentioned throughout the AP Bio course. Basically, proteins are good for storage, signaling, body defense, contractile proteins and muscles, transport molecules, structural components, and catalyze chemical reactions as enzymes. Um, the monomer for proteins are amino acids. There's basically 20 amino acids in the body, and they all are different based on the R group. Or the, or the side chain, and um, basically they all contain CHON, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Um, examples would be enzymes, hemoglobin, and insulin. Lastly, you have nucleic acids. Uh, nucleic acids basically carry genetic information. All nucleic acids are made up of monomers, with, uh, the monomer being nucleotides. Um, all nucleotides have a phosphate, a base, and a 5-pentose sugar. Examples would be DNA and RNA. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are basically sugars. They're in that C1H2O1 um, format. Basically, the monosaccharide, the, the monomers are mon monosaccharides, which is, means one sugar. Examples of, mo of monosaccharides would be glucose and fructose, which both have that C6H12O6 formula. They just differ in um, in the double bonded oxygen or orientation within the within the molecule. They're just isomers of each other. So disaccharides, um, examples would be maltose and sucrose. Disaccharides are when two monomers come together. So maltose is when glucose and glucose come together, and sucrose is when glucose and fructose come together. Polysaccharides are when you have three or more uh, monomers, uh, three or more monosaccharides coming together. And glycogen is an example of polysaccharide. Glycogen is basically when animals store glucose. They store it in the form of glyc in glycogen. Starch is the form that plants store glucose, and cellulose is actually found in plant cell walls. <clears throat> um, it's actually really important to know these different examples of monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides because they're often frequently um, multiple choice questions on the AP Bio exam. Um, lipids are very important to know as well. They're another type of macromolecule. Monomers for lipids are hydrocarbons. Lipids are hydrophobic and nonpolar, meaning they fear water and they're nonpolar because remember, water is polar. Do you have triglycerides with the three fatty acid bonded to a glycerol molecule? And there's going to be a picture later on in the next slide of a triglyceride, so you'll see the three fatty acids bind to, binding to a glycerol. There's um, also phospholipids, which have hydrophilic phosphate groups and a hydrophobic fatty acid tail. Phospholipids are important, for example, in the cell membrane. The cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer. We'll see a picture of that later. And also cholesterol and other lipids. Um, basically steroids, such as estrogen and testosterone, are examples of lipids. So here are some pictures of lipids. You have saturated, unsaturated, saturated. You have all these single bonds. S for single, saturated, single, single bonds. Unsaturated, you have um, one double bond right here with the kink. And that's right here. You see that double bond, and there's a little kink, and that's an unsaturated lipid. Moving to the right, you see the triglyceride molecule I was mentioning earlier. Here you see the glycerol, and here you see three fatty acid chains. <clears throat> um, on the bottom left, you see a phospholipid bilayer. Again, like I mentioned, cell membranes are made up of phospholipid bilayer. You have these phosphate heads, and then you have these tails. Again, you have these phosphate heads on the bottom, then you have these tails. So you have a phospholipid bilayer. It's bi means two, 
you have two layers of phospholipids. And basically hydrophilic are these heads, so water can be here on this surface, on the surface. Water can be here on the inside, but water cannot be here in between because this is hydrophobic because these are all lipids. Remember, these are glycerol chains right here. So this is all lipids and this is hydrophobic, so water fearing. So nothing that's polar can go here. Polar, polar substances can be on the outside, polar things can be on the inside, but they cannot go through these fatty acid chains. Um, so if anything that is polar needs to come into the cell, it would have to come in through a carrier protein, um, a protein channel, which we'll discuss later on. <clears throat> on the bottom right, you see a cholesterol. You see this ring structure of a cholesterol. And cholesterol is actually um, a constituent of membranes. It's really important in membranes. It contributes to the rigidity and flexibility of membranes and the source of steroid hormones. Proteins, the monomers are amino acids. You have 20 different types of amino, of amino acids and they all differ on the R group. So the R group basically determines the identity of the protein. Um, peptide bonds are the bonds that form proteins. So monomers form dipeptides and polypeptides through peptide bonding. Basically, the protein structure is really important. Um, it's been the subject of a lot of questions before and even an essay question in the past. So you should know that the it starts off with the primary protein structure, which is just a sequence of amino acids with hydrogen bonding. Then it moves to the secondary protein structure. The secondary proteins, you can either have an alpha helix or a beta pleated sheet. Um, this occurs when the sequence of amino acids are linked together by hydrogen bonds again. Then you have tertiary protein structures, which is this image right here. Um, this occurs when certain attractions are present between the alpha helices and beta pleated sheets. So they all kind of conglomerate together and there's hydrogen bonding, and there's also disulfide bridges here. Um, then you have the quaternary structure, which is a protein consisting of more than one amino acid chain, and hemoglobin is the most important um, example to remember for quaternary structure. Peptide bonds, again, are bonds that form proteins. They bring amino acids together. Um, there's usually two different types of reactions, dehydration reactions and hydrolysis reactions. In dehydration reactions, you're basically removing a water to form one long polymer. So here you have one polymer, here you have another little monomer, these two different things. By removing water, you get one thing. In hydrolysis, you get the opposite. You have one thing you start off with, you add water to it, and then you separate it into two different things. So dehydration you have two things, two separate things, you remove water, you get one thing. Hydrolysis, you start off with one thing, you add water, you separate it, and then you get two things. Nucleic acids are the last type of macromolecules you should know. The monomer is nucleotides. Um, there's base, it's made, made up of four to five bases, uh, basically. You have adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine in DNA, and then you, and you in RNA, the thymine gets replaced with the uracil. So the base pairs are important to remember. Um, for the AP bio exam, adenine and thymine always prove together in DNA, and cytosine and guanine always prove together in DNA. Um, if this were RNA, the T would just be replaced with the U. So in RNA, adenine and uracil get paired together, and cytosine and guanine get paired together. Another thing you should remember are purines and pyrimidines. Basically, um, ag, you should remember the, the, the phrase ag pure. So ag pure. Adenine and guanine are purines, cytosine and thymines are pyrimidines. So if you just remember ag pure, you should remember adenine and guanine are, pur are purines and the other two would be pyrimidines. Um, so it's also important to compare and contrast DNA and RNA. So DNA is double stranded, its bases are adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. It has a sugar made up of deoxyribose. RNA, on the other hand, is single-stranded. Its bases are adenine, cytosine, guanine, and uracil, and its sugar is ribose. So being able to compare and contrast these two uh, DNA and RNA is very important. It's also remember to remember. It's also important to remember Ag pure. Um, it's also important to remember the different base pairings in DNA and RNA, and of course the monomers being nucleotides. This is a really good picture. Um, this top left basically comparing and contrasting in an RNA like I did earlier.